Welcome back. Next, we'll take a look at string manipulation in Q. So first of all, we're going to introduce two new functions that are really useful when we're looking at manipulating strings. They are VS, which stands for vector from scalars, and SV, which stands for scalar from a vector. So I've got a, a link here to some more additional reading on, on what this is. So this vector from scalar uses tokenizing. Um, basically, at a high level, what that is doing is just splitting up the string depending on the character you've passed it. So in this example here, we've got this string on the right hand side. Um, we've got the character set and we colon in there twice. And when we run VS and we pass our first parameter as our, our character we want to split up on, or in other words, our delimiter, let's see what happens. So you can see my one large list has been split up into three smaller lists and it's been split up every time a semicolon has appeared. And in this second example, I'm just doing the exact same thing, except I'm using infix notation. So remember the square bracket means we're using functional notation and then we can also use infix notation in, in this case. Um, so we don't have to have just one character here. In the second example down here, we're showing that we can actually um, pass two characters as our delimiter. So I've got a semicolon and asterisk appearing here and also here. So when we run this, you'll see that's now split up at, th at those places. And I've created this new list of lists A. Um, so then if I wanted to further split that up, so say I've, I've got my three sub lists here, I want to split that up then on equals. I can then do that um, using functional notation and also combining it with our each operator, which is going to iterate over every sub list here. So you can see each element of A has been split up into two smaller strings um, where the equal sign occurs. Okay, now what would we do if we wanted to put that back together? We could use the opposing fu function, which is called SV. And it basically will concatenate our smaller strings back into a larger string. So I can do that in this example here. So if we have SV and we pass a delimiter, so in this example, I'm just passing the vertical line and then I pass it my list of smaller strings. So that will look like this here. So when we run that, we see we've gone back up to one single string like we passed in, except this time we don't have a semicolon, we've got the vertical line. And we could even make that a space, for example, um, or we could get rid of any characters and it would just concatenate them together without any characters in between. Okay, so these two functions are very useful and, and used a lot when you're generating file paths. Um, so head over here to this link for some for further reading. Um, and then you can try out this exercise. So the first one, we're just getting you to use VS to write each word of the string. It's about time on a separate line. And the second example is asking you to combine these lists of strings into one. So as a hint here, we're obviously looking for you to use SV in that example. Okay. So once you're happy with that, let's move on um, and look at another common requirement when working with strings. So that's when we've got some additional white space. And what we often want to do is just trim that white space down. So our string hasn't got all of these additional leading or trailing characters. So I've got three different functions I can use to do that. I've got L trim, which removes the characters on the left-hand side, which is basically our leading characters. Then or trim will remove our trailing or our characters on the right-hand side. And then trim will do both sides. So if we run that, you'll see what I'm, what I'm saying here. ABC, I've, I've removed these characters on the left, but I still have the additional ones here. And then that's vice versa for or trim. And then trim, you can see it's removed on both sides. So when I do a match on just the string ABC without any spaces, you can see only C matches. It's the only exact match. Okay, so have a go with this short exercise here. Remove the space from the beginning and end of the string KDB is fun. Okay, so what if we wanted to do the opposite? So instead of removing our white spaces, we actually wanted to add padding or, or white space. What we could use to do that is this dollar operator. So I know we've seen the dollar operator before. We can head to our overloaded glyphs page that we know and love, check out the dollar and see um, all the different 
variations of implementations of dollar. The one we are looking at now is this pad string. So you can see when it's got a leading numeric value in front with the dollar sign and then the string on the right hand side, that's the pad implementation of the dollar operator. So what that does basically is we'll add additional white space characters to either the right if we have a positive number or to the left if we have a negative number. So you can see example is seven characters long. I've asked for 10 characters and that's how I'm getting my additional one, two, three characters on the right hand side. So just to note as well, if you use a size smaller than your string, so if we use $5 example instead, what happens is we only get the first five characters returned. So you'd be capping it at P. So I think we have that solution here. If we try that out. Yeah, you can see you're only getting EX AMP. So do be careful when using padding, just that you know the length of your longest string or else you might end up truncating your data sooner than you wanted to. Okay. And the last section in this video is casing. So in KDB, um, we have two very useful functions to change from upper to lower case and vice versa, and they are lower and upper. So you can see here, I've got all uppercase small and I'm changing that to lower. So when we run this, you see my characters have changed to lowercase and then I'm just doing a, a match here to double check that's done what I thought it's gonna do, which it has. Um, and then vice versa with big here, I've got all lowercase and then I'm changing it to upper case and then I'm checking that matches that which it does. I've got some further reading there. Please go check that out and then have a go at this exercise. So writing KDB is fun in all lowercase and in all capitals. And just to point out strings in KDB are case sensitive. So for example, this QB is not equivalent to this QB. So if we just test that out, let's have a look. So if we have QB, Oh, and we do a match operator on all lowercase qb. We'll see we get zero returned. And if we use the equals operator, we would see so q no match and then e e e do match. Um, so just worth noting that. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in our next video.